Welcome everybody to the PHTJ podcast show. That was good timing. You were hydrating just as I, <laughs> as I started. So right. if you are watching on video, I'm starting and Joe's drinking water and that's what we should, all should be doing. That's true. Calm yeah. down. We uh, actually, this is our second attempt at this because we, we recorded something this morning and, and uh, it didn't work out. I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to lay blame, but it just didn't work, but I'm actually glad because there was one thing that I wanted to talk about and yeah. I forgot. So yeah. uh, now now is my chance to to not leave that out. That's true. Um, how are you? You got anything? You got anything you want to talk about? Anything? No, man. No. Anything the new? Industry? Yeah. Any new? You want to do a music uh, podcast? You want to talk about new releases? Or, no, yeah? I don't think. Uh, Any other topic that might be mm, on our listeners' uh, minds? New gear, hot new gear. <laughs> Yeah, hot new gear. Yeah. Yeah. I don't uh, think we can it's, learn to get up dance finally together. Yeah, I don't think that's uh I, I don't think that's the topic at all, man. We probably not. We obviously uh are uh, we're gonna we're recording this on March eighteenth. I think we're gonna try and drop it the same day if Mike can get it edited. Uh we're both crazy busy as I'm sure you all are. Uh just feeling the effects of the coronavirus situation with the entire world really and the events industry in particular. So Pretty much. Yeah. So, so kind of rewind us back, Mike. I remember this morning we talked about this, you know, how you and I had made this, the last podcast. Let's kind of start from there. And then, yeah. So two weeks ago, you and I recorded a podcast um, yeah. that was supposed to land tomorrow, which would have been March 19th. Yeah. And our topic at that point was, and that was when we were supposed to be at Mobile Beat this week. Yeah. And the topic was about this coronavirus, which at that point, two weeks ago, it was obvious this thing was going to be a thing, yeah. but I don't think either you or I, or probably most people outside the medical industry would have predicted it, that it was going to be this big a thing. Right. Uh, any, if anybody wants to take me to task on that, I'm fine with that. Uh, maybe other people saw this coming, but, um, but I still go back to that. I listened to that podcast. So anyway, we dropped that. We pushed that podcast out earlier. Yeah, we did. Once, uh, once it became, a, you know, obvious that this was yeah. going to be uh, impactful and let's not bother waiting till March 19th. Uh, but I'm proud of that, Joe, because ahead of the curve, you and I were pretty much our message was to the industry yep. and to DJs try to postpone these events and that Push. has been yep. you know since monday and that's pretty pretty much occupied 95 percent of my time since monday has been couple after couple after couple after client because they're not all weddings just contacting us and thankfully the vast majority are postponing yes. has that been your experience as well it has in terms of the wedding market the, the uh corporates are seeming to cancel um, we have had a few people that are, that are in the wedding thing and they're just saying, we've hit the wall. We can't go on. We've got to, <laughs> our hearts can't take it. Our brains can't take it. Our souls can't take it. We're pulling the plug on this thing. So we have had a few weddings canceled, several corporates, but for the most part, Mike, you know, fingers crossed, I feel like a, a, a little bit lucky, quite frankly. Well, yeah, I don't know if luck has anything to do with it, but I, I, I think it's great that, that the vast majority of brides aren't throwing their hands in the air and saying, right. fuck it, I don't want to get married. This is too much. <laughs> Most of them are saying, well, this really sucks. I wanted to have a March or an April wedding, but now yeah. I have to have an August wedding or I sure. have to have a September wedding or whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, our numbers are pretty much, we've, we've rescheduled over 60 events. Yeah. And uh, I think we're right them, around 40, I think. And two of them have basically said, we don't want to move forward. Yeah. So what are you doing for those? Right. Um, so we, we do, I guess it, it's, a, it's a little bit of a slippery slope here. We talked about it a little bit <laughs> when we recorded this the first time. Um, it, it, it's interesting, Mike, because both of the two people are actually next weekend. So March 28th, mm -hmm. which quite frankly, for Bun DJ Company, I feel like that was the official kickoff of wedding season. We had... Oh, Joe, totally. Yeah. This maybe, weekend was Maybe 10 or 12. Good, yeah. But I, we had 22 events. Holy uh, Not all weddings. But, no, I don't understand. Yeah. 27, 28th, and 29th is devastating. Yep. Losing that weekend. And again, we talked about this earlier. First world problems. Other people have it way worse. I'm not trying yeah, to say. But right. Yeah. That was going to be the kickoff. That was the kickoff. Busy. Yes. So good. And, and which is interesting because it's usually maybe the weekend after. Um, so 
it was going to be huge. And um, the two people that have wanted to cancel, one was my personal client. Um, I guess maybe he's had a little bit of forethought and never did send his uh, balance check in. Um, even though he was, you know, well within the time he should have, and I'm not going to pursue that. And I just let him cancel and I kept the deposit. The other person is, is another, you know, client of ours and she is saying she wants to pull the plug, but I'm hearing from some other vendors that she's still thinking about having it go on, whether it's five people or 10 people or under 50. So I, my response to her was, hey, as long as you're having a wedding, we, we're still planning we on coming. There. We could yeah. provide music for 10 people. Yeah, we don't yeah. care. Like, yeah. So I, I'm just kind of curious where that one's going. Those are the only two I'm really dealing with, Mike. And, and I think that where we kind of pivoted this morning and started talking about this is, you know, the question, and she's paid in full. So the question is, if she pulls the plug, what is, what am I going to do? Right. You know, am I, am I just going to half it and keep the deposit, which is half? Or am I going to keep the whole thing or am I going to give it all back? And, and you kind of had, we had mixed, mixed. Yeah. Uh, listen, and I'm going to say this, nobody on this, no, none of our listeners yeah. have to take this as gospel. It's just yeah. my one man's opinion. Um, but I, the two people, the two clients that are canceling for us, I'm going to give them their money back. Oh, um, oh right. Yeah. Well, one yeah. of them has only given us a deposit. The other one has paid us in full. Right. Uh, I, I, I don't feel comfortable keeping anyone's money mm. or services that we can't provide. We yeah. literally can't. Yeah. And it's not like this has anything to do with them. This yeah. isn't a, our engagement broke up or right, we got into right. a fight or blah, yeah, blah, blah. Yeah. it has nothing to do with them. And I put myself, you know, Kelly and I got married March 30th, seven years ago. So mm -hmm. if this thing were following the same timeline seven yeah. years ago, Kelly yeah. and I would be caught up in this. Now, yeah, you would. I am sure we would have postponed rather yep. than canceled. Yeah. But I could, uh, I understand the absolute frustration that some mm. clients now, listen, if it was 60 wanted to cancel and two were yeah. postponing, yeah. That, financially, I wouldn't be able to do it. I, I would bankrupt elite entertainment. Mm -hmm. So it's probably easier for me to say this three days of rescheduling and realizing, mm -hmm. okay, it's going to be a small percentage that actually mm -hmm. want to cancel. Mm -hmm. But for those, all I've done with those two, it's, it has said, let's talk next week. Yeah, I do like this. I just want to <laughs> see if after a week, they change their mind because sometimes it's human nature mm -hmm. when shit hits the fan to just quit and go, mm -hmm. ah, screw it. I don't mm -hmm. want to get married, but, mm -hmm. but maybe after seven days and seeing, and listen, Facebook is filled with brides telling these stories of, Hey, we had to postpone. We had to reschedule. The yep. vendors have been great. Everyone's been kicking in. Maybe after seven days, they'll say, yeah, you know what? We called our banquet hall. We found a new date. But if next week both of these clients still are adamant, I am I'm going to return the money. Yeah, man, it's tough. It, it is really tough. I I, I don't for I foresee her. I, I'm going to do what you suggested first. I'm going to say, hey, and, and again, I did send her an email today. We talked to some other vendors. It sounds like you're still doing this. We're going to be there come hell or high water, and, right. and haven't heard back from her. So she may have pivoted maybe she is still going to try and do it on the 28th hopefully though she postpones um i, I think at at most i would keep her deposit I, i'll be honest i just i'm i don't know that i would return it all i, okay. I guess um i did though mike and, and this is kind of where we shifted the conversation this morning in terms of taking care of the djs and talking about the djs i had only had a couple of guys reach out to me about you know, what about us? What about getting paid? Because the only full-timer here is obviously Randy and he's, right. you know, makes weekly money plus his money on his shows. And so I, I after the, the original recording of this this morning, I did reach out to the guy that had, had said, you know, what, what are we, what if we need money or, you know, what are we going to do? Like, for example, let's say this guy that I spoke to, one of my DJs was, on 328, he was booked and he got canceled. Or I'm sorry, say they pushed to August. Postponed, right. Postponed to August. Mm -hmm. Then I would still pay him on the 29th or 30th. You know what I mean? Right. And that was not my policy when you and I talked this morning. And you said you had kind of reached out to your guys and said, look, if you guys need the money, you know, 
I will pay you from the original date. And then just know that when August comes and the reschedule date comes around, you've already been paid. You know? Yeah, that's the offer I made to my staff. Yep. I sent everyone an email on Monday and yep. I, I went through a few things. I believe I posted that in the PhDJ graduate uh, page if you want to see that, if you're a PhDJ graduate and you want to see mm-hmm. that email. But I basically, A, I told my staff, if any of your events still take place and you mm-hmm. don't feel comfortable doing them, we, we can internally reassign. Mm-hmm. I only had one guy. He's a father of a newborn. And yep. he said, thank you, Mike. I, I don't want to expose myself. Fortunately, not all of his events have postponed anyway, but he basically said, yes, I'm not going to feel comfortable doing any of these weddings yep. uh, for the foreseeable future. I also said to my staff, just be prepared if any of your clients postpone to a date where you're blocked off. Right. I am going to ask you if you can open it. I'm not guilting you. I yep. accept if you can't do it, but yep. I will be asking. And yep. I don't know if my email had anything to do with it, but I have had great success with and mm-hmm. this is kudos to my DJs. Yeah, man. Guys like Jay Thompson, Phil Walsh, Dan mm-hmm. Famosa, guys who have full time jobs. Yeah. And basically block off their Fridays because it's it's, you know, they're literally at their other job. Yeah. Right. Are are making exceptions, taking yep. day, taking vacation days from their yep. day job to accommodate. Yep. Uh, we had one bride, she she literally worded her email please, for the love of God, tell me if Phil <laughs> Walsh is available on my new date or I will cry. And I, Phil had Pull the date knocked off. Yeah. I called Phil. Phil, will you open it? He said, of course, I'll open it. I emailed her and she was like, oh my God, you made my day. Yeah. So that was point number two that I sent the email to my staff. And then I also said to my DJs, if, you, if any of your events get postponed yeah. and you needed that money now, yeah. I will pay you that money now <laughs> for the future event. I knew going into it, I, I know you're about to say something, let me just say, it's I knew right. going into it that only two of my DJs yeah, right. would probably take me You off. weren't going to get flooded. Right, because m- most of my guys, like we just said, full time, they have a full-time job, that's yeah. their income, yeah. and this is gravy to them or secondary. Or you know, I know one guy who basically takes all of his DJ money and it goes right into his retirement fund. Good for smart, him. He lives smart on guy. His, he <laughs> lives on his salary. This is his, so smart guy. But, you know, the two guys that I have that are basically full time at this, it's, you know, they have bills to pay now. They yeah. have a mortgage. They have, yeah. you know, food to put on the table for their family. Yeah. It's no help to say to them, hey, you're going to get that thousand dollars, but not till, you know, June. So I, I have already prepaid one of my guys and I think I'm going to prepay him for another event. I, I fully trust that he is going to do those events. Somebody said to me, well, what if he leaves? And I'm like, that's the least of my concern. He's yeah. not leaving. You know what right, I mean? So, right, right. Um, yeah, I just, I, maybe not everyone is financially in a position to do that, but it's something that I offered and I'm not trying to pat myself on no, the back. No, no, man. I mean, it made me change my, my it, it made me change my, my viewpoint a little bit about it. And, and, and I did, I called him up. I said, listen, man, let me know. And he said, I'm not there yet. You know, if how long this goes on, we're not sure. I may reach back out, and I said, "Please do." He's been with me for more than a decade, so right. he ain't going anywhere, and and right. I got to take care of him. Um, everybody's got to sacrifice something, people. I mean, you know, it, and it can be as simple as you know, Mike was saying, you know, my summer just got smashed. I, you know, not as much time on the Jersey Shore. Yeah, I told Kelly the other day we were kind of laughing. All my beach days. That's you know, right. We were kind of laughing about it. I had a few it. Sundays blocked off in July and August that I'm now doing events. But yeah, yeah. If that's if that's my cross to bear right. during right. Right. Virus, right. Uh, then I've made out pretty he, well. He gets you know? uh, very tan in the summer, and yeah, you yeah. know, and even you know, and, and just simple things like again, opening up dates, doing shows on we, what we would consider a weird day, a Wednesday or a Thursday. Those are things that you have to 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 keep in mind that are that are going to happen. You know, Randy uh, texted me just a minute ago, right before we went on air. He said May second wants to move to Halloween. I mean, Halloween has been sacred for fifteen years with my family. You know, my, I have kids. You know, right. but I said, look, man, if she wants Halloween, I'm I'll and she's got me booked. Good hell with you. it, man. They, they've they've kind of outgrown trick or treating. That you know, at this point right. in their lives put me on Halloween, man. Let's roll. So, you know, it's just a, I feel for the, I feel for them. You know, this is a very um, emotional time for people getting married. It's a very expensive time, you know, and most people can't bear the financial burden of taking a 30,000 
dollar plus hit. Right. That's why, you know, we're saying, Hey, let's postpone. We've got big companies. And that's, that was another thing we talked about this morning, Mike was, you know, I feel we're a little bit fortunate in that we have big companies and, and can rebook these people. You know, the webinar we're doing tonight, we're kind of bringing in some other sectors and we're going to hear from uh, our friend Digital Dave that does a lot of hospitality and bars and restaurants. And we're going to hear from our friend Brian Bonacisi that is, a, quite frankly, a, a destination DJ. So we'll hear all angles tonight. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I often um, can console myself when I think about people who have it worse. Yeah. And, you know, the fact that I'm not going to make as much money now and it's just going to get pushed back to later in the year. Yeah. Well, you know what? My 2020 financially, when all is said and done, will probably look similar. Yeah. If, you know, whether there had been coronavirus or not, but somebody like a digital Dave, mm. he's missing out on nightclub nights that aren't going to get postponed. Yeah. They're gone. gone. Like the, you know what I mean? And, and mm. he's, and it, it, anyone, any one of our listeners that doesn't know who we're talking about, Dave Lander, digital Dave, phenomenal DJ out of Pittsburgh. Mm. If you don't follow him, you should follow mm. him on, on social everywhere else. Mm -hmm. He is putting an amazingly positive spin on this. Yeah. I saw a post the other day about him spending time with his kids and, you know, and everything else, which is a great way to console yourself during this time. But yeah. that's lost income for him. I mean, I, I don't know. Dave's financial position. I don't know whether he can afford a month or two of no income, but right. it's difficult. I'm going to get this money back later down the road. Yeah. You know, uh, people in the hospitality, my, my sister got laid off from her restaurant. I was going to ask. And they basically that. said, you know, we'll hire you back when yeah. things are back to normal, but we yeah. don't need a, a service manager for breakfast when our, when we're closed. Wow. So uh, that's lost income. You know, I mean, my sister's not going to, she, maybe she can collect unemployment, but she's not yeah. going to get what she was getting. Yeah. And, you know, there's only so long you can sit at home and stare at a wall before it becomes like, okay, what the hell's going on? Let me get back to right. work. Right. And there's no work. So, we, so, we, so as much as it's tough for us, a lot of people have it a lot worse. So there's, there's over 400 people registered for that webinar tonight, guys. I'm going to uh, give Mike the link. And so when he posts the uh, podcast in a little while, he'll, I'll, I'll send you the link, Mike. And so this, this is not for just for vault members. You are doing no, this for this everyone. Is, yeah, members. this is anybody. Events industry is it's open tonight. It's over 430 people signed up. Mike's going to be on. Um, and I'm going to be on. Brian Bonacici, Jason Janai. And I've got a lawyer from one of the largest software companies in the world that specializes in contracts. She's going to come on and answer legal questions that we probably shouldn't be answering because we play records and don't. Right. <laughs> never went to law school. And by um, the way, speaking <laughs> about giving out free content, because I think that's yeah. wonderful what you're doing. Uh, Ryan and Jake from Mobile. Yes. That's I, what I, I think they deserve a, a tip of the cap because... Yep. Basically, what they did, and first of all, what a ha what a harrowing situation for them all last week. Gross. As as the NBA put their season on hold and Major League Baseball, NCAA for them, tournament, everything. For them to be staring at this convention that was supposed to start on Monday, probably knowing this isn't uh, we're going to have to postpone, yeah. but they kept putting it off, putting it off. Finally, what was a Friday afternoon? Yeah. Uh, they pulled the plug, and I I, I don't blame them for waiting as long as yeah. they did, and I don't yeah. blame them for doing it. But man, what a tough position. My heart breaks for both of them. Uh, but especially turn, it being Ryan's last year. Right, especially, right. But to turn lemons into lemonade, they are now offering the content. Uh, any speaker, and I think all but two have, have ponied up. Yeah. Um, anyone who was going to give a seminar this week is offering yeah. online. So I know that's actually going on probably as we speak. It right? is. Yeah, um, it's going on. So it's mobilebeatlasvegas.com slash live. And all you got to do is just, it's free. You just go on register and you can start watching right away live. And so tomorrow, which is March 19th, Mike uh, and myself will be on, I'll be on at noon Eastern standard time. And Mike will be on at 615 Eastern standard time. Again, I'm at noon, Mike's at 615, but just tune in for the whole day. Minimize, minimize it in the bottom of your screen. Yeah. Today, if you, if you get it, get on there in time and, and just learn. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned, uh, this morning, how you're kind of blocking the news, and I'm actually sitting here with CNN. I on. know you are, <laughs> uh, but but you know what? I should turn off CNN after a while. I think it's important to stay informed. I think it's important that all of us it now is. more than ever. But it can become overwhelming. Yeah. Um. And, and at some point, I, 
I should turn it off and I should turn these mobile B presentations on yeah. and other live content like that because uh, there's two things you can do during this. You can either wallow in it or you can use this time to improve yourself and get better yeah. and, and things like that. And I know that was one of the things that you referenced earlier. Um, there, there's some good ideas that you have about you know, how to utilize this downtime. Yeah, we've talked about it on, on podcasts. You can go back and listen to it. There's stuff in the vault. Again, I'm, I've got Digital Dave on uh, the next uh, webinar, which is March 25th, a, a week from today. And he's going to be, his title is literally called Shit You Can Do During Your Downtime. So right. he, he's, he's going to talk about organizing crates and finding music and everything. Like, you know, we, we've got to utilize this time. We've got to all stay positive. we got to know that when people are, <laughs> come back out, they're going to be ready to, to rage. Right. I know I'm going to be ready to rage. I might even start leading <laughs> line dances. Who knows? You know, I, I was talking to one bride <clears throat> who was postponing for June. Yeah. And she said, my concern is when this is all yeah. said and done, are people really going to want to celebrate? <sighs> and I said to her, and I said to her, yeah, I think now yeah. more than ever. Yes. You know, I think once we're all finally <laughs> able to get back out there, I yeah. think the bars will be packed, the clubs yeah. will be packed, restaurants will be booked Monday through Friday. Now yeah. that's going to be short term, right. but I, I think those first few weddings back are yeah. going to be some of the best parties we've ever thrown. <laughs> this, because, it's not even a question. It's going to be know, like Footloose. Cabin <laughs> fever and people just go crazy, you know? Yeah, man. I think you're uh, right. I'm trying to, I'm looking off screen right now because I'm yeah. trying to look something up. Um, so one of the things that Dave suggest, I know Dave put a meme out yeah. uh, last week about shit you can do. And yep. one of the things he suggested was make a mix and put it online. And, oh yeah, we um, talked about that. And I did that yesterday. Yep. I, uh, one of my DJs is also a fitness instructor. Yep. And she told me she had a class where the theme was Motown versus disco. So I said, I was working with her Saturday night my last, it's going to be my last wedding for quite a while. Yeah. And, um, I said, Oh Mary, let me put a playlist. Let me put a mix together for you. So yeah. I mixed it for her and I, I put it up on my mix cloud. If anybody wants to check that out, I thought it was a fun, I went basically back and forth between a 70 song to a yeah. 70 song. And I used a lot of re drums. And <clears throat> I was going to ask you if you did that. Yeah. yeah. But talking about mixes and talking about this whole coronavirus and self quarantining, if you have not listened <laughs> to Stacy Hawk, Carol, on uh, Mixcloud. She put up a mix the other day called Crazy Quick Quarantine Mix. And let me look at what she is on Mixcloud. Her name is just Stacy, uh, S-T-A-C-I-E. It is, I don't even want to ruin it by yeah. giving you any yeah, yeah, spoilers. Yeah. Listen to the mix. She <laughs> threw so many, first of all, it's one of those quick mixes like like a core of a chorus of a song, yeah. a verse of a song. So it's constantly changing. And there are some songs in there that they'll even take you a second and go, why is this? And then you go, Oh yeah. yeah right. I mean, she had me laughing out loud at a few points and like going, yeah, girl. So, I mean, it's only a half hour long, but yes. if you want to find it, right. If you want to just lose your mind for a half hour and not worry about shit and everything else, uh, look that up and give that a spin. And I think she's got, um, and this is not about me sharing it, but Lander shared it and a few other people. I think yeah. she's like number two or three in the, as far <laughs> she's as killing it. it. Yeah. She's killing it. It's, it's gone um, quote unquote viral. Viral. Right. right. Like, That's not funny anymore. anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I mentioned before we mm. went on, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we're re recording. Yeah. Because I, there was one thing that I forgot to mention this morning. Yeah. Recorded and, and then it didn't work out. <laughs> um, utilize this time to focus on your fitness too. Yeah. Um, I'm a firm believer, and I'm going to try to say this without getting too emotional. I'm a firm believer that the better shape you're in, if you do get something, sickness, mm. illness, mm. whatever, cancer, mm -hmm. and that's what's got me um, emotional, the better chance you have of beating it. Beating it. Mm. And Shay, my dog Shay, is the prime example of that. Mm -hmm. Shay got cancer four and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. We were told, even at the time, amputation and chemotherapy, and he still has a 10 to 20% chance of not making a year. Mm. That was four and a half years ago. He's still mm. alive. He's still robust. He's still yeah. he's an old man, but he's still yeah. active and, and goofy. And I think a huge part of that was the condition Shay was in. Shay was my running partner. Yep. He would run probably, you know, 20 miles a week with me easily. <sighs> 
Um, he was lean. He was in yeah. great condition. He had to have one of the greatest cardiovascular systems of all time. Yeah. And I do believe that the reason he beat the odds and beat cancer was because of the condition Has to be. he was in. Yeah. And so think about that. We all are finding ourselves with a shitload mm. of downtime. Yeah. I mean, not me. I've been in the office 12 hour days rescheduling <laughs> gigs, but most, I see so many posts about people who are self quarantined and yeah. staying home and, and staring at the wall. Yeah. You have no excuse not to get down in your basement and work out for an hour and yep. you know, whatever. There's a lot of online classes you can look for. Yep. Tons. Yourself, but focus on your fitness during this time. Um, because a, I think we'd all agree you're in better you're in a better position in life if you're in better shape. But B, God forbid you get this coronavirus, I think the difference between it being a bad cold and hospitalizing you and perhaps even killing you Health. is probably the condition. That's why the elderly are more, are more at risk. Yeah. You know, I actually, I never thought I'd have this conversation with my mother last week, but I urged mm -hmm. her to stop going to the gym. Me too. I'm so proud of my 76-year-old mom. She goes to Me the too. gym five days a week. Same. My mom too. And and I think half of it is social. She's got a yeah, bunch of girlfriends yeah, yeah. there. But yeah, who cares? Yeah. She's in a gym yeah. for a couple hours. Work. But I said, Mom, please, for the next two or three weeks, so now too. it's going to probably be even longer, just stay at home, work out at home, walk up and down the stairs, do something, but don't go to the gym. So anyway. I had the same conversation with my mom. Yep. Yeah. She's yeah. 75 and she's in there. Mm. She walks with her girlfriends and then she goes to the gym and I'm just like, mom, you got to, you got to pump the brakes for a, a minute. Well, I think as it turns out, I think New York has shuttered gym. So right. I probably yeah. just had that conversation a week early, but um, yeah, anyway, that was the one message that after we got offline this morning, yeah. like, oh, damn, I wanted to mention that. Well, I'm glad we're we... all talking about utilizing. Um, so I'm glad the recording. I'm glad I screwed up the recording. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so there's a lot of things you can do during this quote unquote downtime. Yeah. Um, one of them should be, you know, Kelly and I yesterday did a basement workout yeah, together. That's awesome. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to focus on your fitness. Well, everybody hang in there. Uh, again, there's a lot of stuff going to be coming out online. Um, you know, again, ton tonight, which is March 18th, we got the webinar. Uh, we'll put the link down below. It's open to everybody, not just vault members. Uh, we also have uh, tomorrow and today as well, Mobile Beat Las Vegas. Um, dot com slash live. Um, Mike, didn't you want to share an email? Yeah, I just well opened this up. Um, yeah. So if you are looking for how to deliver this message to yeah. Yeah, your yeah, clients, yeah. if you're looking for how can I explain to them that postponements are mm -hmm. so much more helpful for my business, not critical, only, you know, critical for my business rather than cancellations in which you want to refund. Mm. Kelly and I, I, I had the first weekend in April off and Kelly and I had booked a bed and breakfast in Princeton, mm. not far from us, but we were just going to have a nice one-on-one -on -one romantic weekend. I had a couple of friends staying at our house to watch our dogs and everything else. I got an email from the bed and breakfast this week and the woman wrote, uh, we understand your concern about your reservation at the Inn at Glen Cairn. Uh, this is a very uncertain time for all of us, and we understand that travel plans have changed dramatically and events have been canceled. Mm. We are a small business and will be negatively impacted by these cancellations. So we are asking you, in good faith, to work with us during this chaotic time. If possible, please allow us to rebook your stay for a time to be determined at a later date. If this is not possible, please contact us via phone. We are not in a situation to furlough our staff and our mm. business has come to a halt recently. We greatly appreciate your flexibility and appreciate your decision to support small businesses around your community and beyond. Businesses like ours will suffer the most and be the least likely to recoup any losses during a potential bailout. I actually called this woman and I said, <laughs> Lydia, I completely understand. I'm a mm -hmm. small business owner myself. Mm -hmm. I think your email was wonderful. It was well received. First of all, I said to her, are you canceling our reservation? And yeah. she said, not at all. If you still want to come here, and Kelly yeah. and I might. We have not decided yet yeah. if we're going, but I guarantee I'm not canceling on this woman. I will postpone. Kelly yeah. and I will find two nights yeah. later in the year because I get it. And I just yeah. thought this email, you know, if you're looking for a way to message this to your to your clients, I, I, you know, you can steal that word for word or take bits and pieces. Yeah, exactly. Right. But I think that was a wonderful message. And speaking of messaging, I love your 
hashtag save the show message. Save the show. Yeah. Out there. So yeah, any DJs that want those graphics, just reach out to me and, and or just pull them off my Instagram and, and share them. Um, feel free to uh, save the show is the hashtag. I think that's the message. I mean, we have been since Monday, but I think that's the message that all of us in the industry need to convey is don't cancel, postpone, push it yep. off, find a new date. You always dreamt of a big wedding anyway. So, you know, why does, yeah. I saw somebody <laughs> say the other day, the magic of your wedding had nothing to do with the date. It had to do with you and your loved ones and your family mm -hmm. and everything else. So, mm -hmm. so what if it's not March 28th? So what if it's June 25th? So yep. what? Yep. Find another date. So yep. um, anyway, I guess we'll, we'll leave it Push. on that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, guys, hang in there. We're all in this together, like everybody's saying. And, and if you need myself or you need Mike, all you got to do is DM us or shoot us an email. Or if you've got our cell phone, reach out. I mean, that's what, that's what we're here for, yep. honestly. Yeah. Thanks, Thank everybody. Ciao. All right. Later.